Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Yes, I'm still using a mic that I'm not real happy with, but I'm not in the studio. I'm still up in Central Oregon. And today's show is um, uh, titled, It's All About Me. And uh, I'm going to kind of strike kind of different areas in that uh, subject when it comes to RVing. And uh, because I think that's a motivator for some of the stuff going on. And uh, uh, I understand sometimes where people need to say or take a selfish look at, you know what, I need to take care of me first. But I'm finding the world is not that way. It's not all about me. Maybe it's all about you. Is it? Is uh, getting out there and doing this RV uh, freedom, leaving the world behind, getting rid of all those responsibilities, no more mortgage, sell the house, live in a van, buy yourself a Class C, go out there and live it up. Because it's all about me. It's all about you. Who cares about the rest? Hmm. Well, I am. I'm learning really quick. It's not all about me. And uh, when I started living a little bit about like that, like maybe it's all about me, uh, suddenly it's, I don't know, disconnect from family a little bit. And uh, life goes on, and um, funny how things kind of sneak up on you. Uh, And what brings this up is I'm finding, uh, thank gosh, me and Sherry bought a house and all that stuff, because I haven't really told the story, but um, maybe I'll kind of give some of it up here, is I'm up in Central Oregon. The question is why? And why is our RV up in Central Oregon? And I'm going to explain to you. We've had it up here because we knew that Sherry's folks were getting up in age. And i um, kind of repeat myself a little bit. But Sherry's father passed away. A uh, dear friend of mine. but um, And a good good parents. And uh, uh, they're up in their 80s. And we, we knew the time was coming. But now, of course, Sherry's mom's around. And, uh, you know, uh, there's actually four siblings. But... Uh, uh, Sherry was kind of the prime choice for them for executor and also um, we're gonna step up and uh, her mom definitely needs uh, support and so we're gonna bring her down to Arizona to have her live with us and uh, we'll take care of the estate when it comes around to it and um, Sherry's father set things up very nice for her, so she has a choice to do anything she wants. And she's like, "Uh, I'm ready to leave this nice little five-acre place. Uh, You know, uh, it's time for some new scenery. And Arizona sounds good, and plus she's got family, myself and Sherry, and, of course, my daughter and grandkids. And uh, so uh, she's like, uh, you know, 82 years old, and she's like, I need a change of scenery. But uh, it's not going to be easy. I mean... If I was RVing, just worrying about me living my life and who cares about all that stuff, um, she wouldn't have the support that she really needs. And that's me and Sherry. And there's a lot of things like that in life where, uh, um, you know, your community needs you. Maybe your family needs you. Maybe the community needs you. I don't know. All kinds of stuff. But, um. You know, just taking this selfish look at life, I don't know is really that healthy. Feels good. Feels really good to yourself. But I think we're people, people depend on people. Uh, Communities depend on people. These little independent um, underdog kind of people, it all sounds good. But in reality, Uh, I think we're just kidding ourselves. 
Well, I need to say thank you for all the great notes and comments we've gotten uh, about Sherry's father passing away. Uh, it's been very nice. Um, and, but I want to uh, address um, a note I got from Frank, and I'll just say his name like that. Been a long-time listener. Really appreciate it. And uh, uh, sent me an interesting article. Um, somebody wrote a article and I didn't get to get all the way through it but I, I like the what they were gonna say is if you took and you know I talk about Bob Wells all the time and living in vans and and uh, he's got quite the um, cult organization going on over there and he's making money from all kinds of things in a nonprofit organization and he's even giving money out <laughs> it's like yeah but someone said you know if you took all those talents of his organization and, and all the things he's doing he uh wouldn't have to live in a van he'd uh, uh he could be quite the uh, uh business man of uh and successful and wouldn't have to live in a van at all he could live a real good life with all those talents kind of wasted energy you might say so uh interesting <laughs> comparison i thought that was uh it's so true you you know sometimes you wonder you get to see these people great talent and just uh throw it away uh and when they could uh be doing some really wonderful things for the homeless or doing things for organizations or uh doing uh, uh world care kind of stuff uh, oh my gosh the guy could have been could have done wonderful things for not only the united states but the world with talents like that and uh i guess that's where you get back to uh it's all about me i just care about me and uh, uh i'm finding that's uh it's just you can fight it all you want you can you know i got to take care of me i need to feel good it's all about me and uh it's not it's about us all of us your family your friends your community uh to grab an rv or live in a van and try to disappear and not be part of the uh, of the community or trying to be part of the engine economic engine uh it's a cop-out it really is and uh i, I find rvers especially the uh van dwellers and live on blm land um not that impressive i mean over and over again i keep seeing videos about worse things i mean i've been talking about this for a long time that criminals are going to get it they're going to start figuring it out especially all these videos and uh now you're starting to hear about more uh, uh suspicious things going on out in uh, campgrounds and people getting hurt and some people being killed even and uh, really odd stories people disappearing and it's, it seems to be more and more and more of those kinds of stories and uh, so um, and I've talked about safety I've talked about people out there I'm talking about uh, singles out there uh, guys or women I had somebody attack me because I was talking about security for women and it's like uh, I know I'm a little old school and uh, uh, there's predators out there and uh, the situation isn't always bad it's usually you know there's good stuff out there uh, safety in numbers that's great but uh, RVing shouldn't be a victim of a bunch of bad judgment that's all I can say um, Gosh, I mean, I love my RV, and I love folks that have retired and had the opportunity to travel. But the realities are, and it's so easy to be so short-sighted about this, is uh, some folks will go, oh, I'm going to do it for years, this is my life, and all that stuff. And, man, when you get exposed to you, uh, and I've met a couple of folks that are up in age, uh, I had two comparisons. Um one is a mother-in-law we're taking care of. It has a lot of medical things that uh, uh, certainly can't RV. Um, and uh, I met a, I have another good friend named Nora who's uh, in her 80s. And uh, she can um, kick your ass. 
She's amazing. Has, I think, a 25-acre ranch. I was just over there visiting with her. And uh, she is one tough cookie. Um, she's not an RVer, but she owns, uh, controls about 23 horses and, and uh, does writing lessons. And, and just totally amazing. She lost her husband many years ago. And uh, um, just an amazing lady. Uh, a little crazy, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a little out there sometimes yeah but gosh you can only hope that you're in that good a shape when you're in your 80s and uh no she didn't have to escape the world and and she doesn't really live a life about all about me because she can uh, constantly works with all ages young people a whole works teaching them how to ride horses and stuff like that and she loves to uh uh try to do some bluegrass stuff i think she plays a I don't know what she plays. I think it's a mandolin or a ukulele. I can't remember. Anyway, but just a really amazing lady. And, uh, boy, if she was a person that went around life just um, and taking all that talent that she has for horses and all that stuff, and she lived a life about all about me kind of person, uh, there's a lot of people that would have missed out on some great opportunities to meet a very wonderful lady. At the same time, our mother-in-law is a very wonderful mother. She was a, a devoted wife, and uh, she, you know, I loved. Oh my gosh, she was quite the gardener, all that stuff. But you know, when you just don't know how the cards are going to fall as you get older, and so uh, I worry about these people that sell everything and they get an RV and they're going to travel, travel, travel until they can't travel anymore. Well, then the problem is, can you get from that point to the next point? Uh, do you have family to support you? Do you have the funds to maybe look at buying another house after RVing? Do you uh, have enough funds to maybe think about assisted living? Go, oh, no, not assisted living. Uh, trust me, there's a lot of folks that need it. Uh, Sherry's mom needs help every day our lives are going to change dramatically um but that's what life's all about some of the greatest cultures out there beyond the united states um incorporate their families and that's why when they come to the united states why uh, so many asian families and stuff do so well because they're so family oriented it's mom dad and their mothers and fathers and their kids and they get together and they throw all their money in the same pot and by uh, households or businesses and uh, uh, they know how to uh, how to support one another it's amazing uh, not an easy life because you're constantly worrying about one another so is it better to is it all about me life here in the United States which seems to be just destroying us through social media and all that stuff and and uh, uh, live for the now and all that is that really the way to go sounds really good until you really start looking at reality and no i'm pretty convinced i'm actually totally convinced it's not all about me and i will not believe it's all about you Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Well, I just posted a video last week uh, about um, 
the Toten Store uh, portable waste tank. And uh, I bought one three years ago. I've never used it. <laughs> Didn't really want to. <laughs> Avoided it. But I got about a 38 gallon, got a good size one. And one thing you got to remember if you're going to use one of those portable waste tanks, it's a big blue thing with wheels. Um, uh, when you fill them up, they are heavy. And so the mechanics I found are really important because I had one of those before. And it was just like a big barrel with a uh, you know screw on top and stuff. And when you go to empty it, it was really tough. But this new uh, Toten Store I got, uh, I did a review and I put a link to it uh, in Amazon. It, uh, uh, it was awesome. It's designed with mechanics involved, knowing that you need to tote it around and you need to empty it and you don't want to spill it all over the place. And that sucks. And uh, so um, uh, it's, it's really well built, very strong, really good tires on it. Um, I actually used it on our RV here and I have to transport it all the way around to the back of the property that we're at, which is a five acre place. And so you just kind of pull it forward, um, rolls really easy. I connected it to my truck hitch and brought it around to the back side of the property. And then it's got this uh, 90 degree kind of uh, hose connection in the back. So uh, when you go to empty it, it's kind of a controlled kind of thing. And uh, very impressed. I was really impressed with it. So uh, check it out in Amazon. Go to uh, look for Toten Store Portable Waste Tanks. Uh, it was nice. Did the job. Rolled really well. Had to take it through gravel, things like that. Connected it to the truck. And then just towed it slowly to the back. It was so nice. And boy, those things, when they're full, they are heavy. 38 gallons is really pushing it. But you can get different sizes. You can get them 15, 20. Um, but we uh, we have a good size black tank, so that's what it was for. And uh, um, yeah, uh, go check them out. Tote and store, that's what they're called. We know most of you are responsible dog owners and want to keep our parks and recreational areas pristine. Most of us have been stuck with cheap dog waste bags that are inconsistent and cumbersome. That's why we created Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are larger, deeper, stronger, and leak proof. Most of all, they have handles that make the bag easy to turn inside out and to seal with your dog's business. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are lemon scented, eco friendly, and come in sheets and now in rolls. Stop getting stuck with cheap waste bags when you can have a Ranger Rob quality premium dog waste bags. Ranger Rob poopy bags are cost effective. They're in Amazon and you can get free shipping right now. Make picking up dog waste easier and comfortable. Ranger Rob poopy bags making dog waste pickup a little easier. Yes, sirree, Bob. <laughs> Get your Ranger Rob poopy bags in Amazon. Uh, we're, you know, I know I talk about these things, and, and it, it's important to me. Uh, when we were RVing, that's really when I got perturbed about uh, people not picking up after their dogs. But I also realized when you go to the dog parks and stuff, the bags aren't the greatest in the world. And so I've always, uh, I always like poopy bags that had handles because they're so much easier to the maneuver and so uh, hard to find those sometimes so I created my own but I wanted it to be a little bigger and wider bag and uh, strong um, affordable the whole work so um, as soon as I got off the road and I started developing the product um, we're pretty proud of them uh, if you really want good quality dog waste bags go to Amazon and I know you guys are traveling it's a piece of cake you know you've ordered stuff before they're affordable. The, the regular sheets are under $10. And then we also developed a, uh, the rolls. Some people said, oh, once you get them on rolls, let me know. And so we developed the rolls and uh, found a dispenser to fit them because our bags are a little bigger than the cheap ones you always buy. And no, I have, have not ever had one of our bags break or have holes in them. Uh, they're strong. You can fill them up with water like a water balloon. They're really good, but they do break down in uh, um, landfills. 
uh, we did a video showing that we we're uh, uh, been uh, leaving uh, RV tra um, um, <laughs> sorry our bags out in the open and out in the weather and over time they actually break down and start disintegrating so it's amazing we're very proud of them and it's because of RVing is why we created the Ranger Rob poopy bags and of course when you buy Ranger Rob poopy bags you're helping our channel you're helping RV Talk Radio. You're helping Good Talk Radio. You're helping our business and all for the Ranger Rob brand. So we appreciate that. So let's move on. Well, one thing I've been discovering about boondocking. Boondocking in cold weather and boondocking in hot weather is not fun in an RV. Um, it's just without p enough power... And I know you guys are trying to get solar to work for air conditioners and stuff like that, but these RVs just—I don't, you know—we I think we got a pretty good RV. We have a Montana, and uh, you know it's cooler up here. And maybe I'm more sensitive to it because I'm from Arizona. I'm a little climatized, but um, and I don't have 30 amp or 50 amp. I'm actually plugged into 110. Uh, just enough to run lights and coffee pot and basic things, uh, the computer, the whole works. But uh, I cannot run uh, electric heater in here at the same time. I do have propane, and I'm going through pay propane like crazy. And I don't care what you say, uh, seven-gallon tanks I got. Uh, you know, it's, I can get pretty good price in propane, uh, usually around $14 a fill one. Um, but, gosh, I'm doing it every three days or so. So now real practical um, boondocking. I mean, obviously it's uh, you, you got to follow the the weather, and if you're not willing to do that, you could be in some very uncomfortable situations as far as being cold or doing, being too hot. Uh, RVs are uh, not good in either one of those, and uh, to cool down an RV uh, is virtually impossible. You can try all kinds of little tricks, but the bottom line, they just uh, if you're going to think you're going to boondock the whole time as an RVer, uh, keep in mind you're going to have to chase the weather. Uh, obviously, if you're in the northwest and it starts getting colder, you start heading south and vice versa. When it starts getting too hot, you start heading north. If you're not willing to do that, and that's not your cup of tea, um, to get this uh, obsessed with being a boondocker, uh, I think again... Um, RV parks are where your support is, where you can get the power that you need to uh, to run air conditioners or cooling systems uh, or heaters or whatever you need. Um, more expensive that way, for sure, but keep it in mind, boondocking in, in extreme weather is really not a good mix. Well, I certainly got a kick once again out of uh, Little House on the Road. Uh, the guy named uh, Rob. I know some folks don't necessarily think he's the greatest, but he brings up good product, <laughs> good, good subjects. <clears throat> and uh, the last show I watched of his was uh, he was talking about people not being financially prepared to go out and live this wonderful world of freedom of RVing. And a lot of guys uh, don't get in a car accident, don't have the funds to fix it, and so they immediately get on the internet and start begging for money or setting up GoFundMes to have people help pay for the repairs. And uh, that's no way to live, people. Uh, one of the things that he was talking about was what he's done to prepare and how he puts money aside and then kind of gives uh, his formula for... Uh, how much money you should have in savings to back up any repairs you may have um, and uh, try to buy everything in cash, try not to do things on credit and can live a very, uh, have fun boondocking and, and living uh, on free camping areas um, and uh, stay within a budget and still have a great time. At the same time, always putting money away in case Something goes amok, and it will go amok. And, uh, but some of this crazy stuff of send me money, I need donations, I go fund me, my car got wrecked, I hit a deer or something. Um, it's insane. 
I know, it's all about me. <laughs> That's what this show's all about, huh? It's all about me. But um, uh, suddenly, you know, I find it funny when it's all about me kind of lets down until they have an issue and it's like, oh, can I have trouble from you? <laughs> I need help from the community. Suddenly, it's not all about me. It's about us. Us, me, doing what I want to do and you sending me money to pay for what I am doing and uh, I don't I guess that's appealing to a lot of people but uh, I don't know a little pride a little bit of doing things on your own kind of uh, having your own uh, structure and, and be proud of being prepared and planning um, that's something that people should do videos about just <laughs> saying how prepared I was for these things to happen and uh, seems like the only thing I see is from some of the van people is all they can brag about is I found more free camping <laughs> free 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 I did a show about that already the other thing I was um, watching is Herbert's travel and they were talking uh, they had a show they did about why people RV and uh, full-time and go full-time and uh, the emphasis on their show was wow I never got to see my wife much and we lived in a house but we had separate lives and didn't get a lot of free time and all that stuff and uh, um, together and uh, that's a great thing to think about is like are you um, but I I don't think it's the RV that's going to make that big difference. Um, <clears throat> whether you live in a home or not, uh, you need to balance uh, uh, work and uh, jobs and stuff like that. And you need to put some effort in you know, making sure that your uh, schedules match and, uh, or something. But having some independence, too, is important. Um, in an RV, you're... Uh, seeing a lot more of each other than um, you normally would having uh, opportunity to be independent is important for everyone uh, yet um, I mean Sherry and I we've been married forever and uh, um, we've managed to uh, well we, we have the we had the problem of not seeing each other uh, as much as we wanted to whether we were in an RV or not um, uh, Sherry uh, worked from the RV she did the 9 to 5 -er kind of stuff because I don't care what you say you still got to worry about the same things of whether you own a house or not and really the number one thing is health care and uh, uh, I think you'll notice a lot of people that do the full timing usually have some um, that are younger uh, if they've come out of the military, well, then they got the VA and they've got some programs that um, allow them to have medical. And most people don't have that. And so uh, then some of them will do some of these uh, programs where they got this astronomical uh, um, we call deductibles. And if you're not saving money and don't have a chunk of change, um, that's a problem but if you're smart and you put twenty thirty thousand dollars on background um, for savings and then you're traveling and you can afford uh, and can get a affordable health care and have a ten thousand dollar deductible um, then hey you're in pretty good shape I got a feeling most of them aren't doing that so uh, uh, you know a living a minimalist life um, there's a whole nother stress in that of things you don't have and when you live in an RV it's also you know the lack of space can be frustrating uh, some days I just hate this like can I just set something out and have it available to me like in my RV right now where I'm sitting I <laughs> because I podcast I have a full-size 27 inch um, computer right in front of me a mixer, keyboards, the whole works, and I pretty much take the whole table. And now, and I don't take this down because I'm constantly working on stuff different times of the day. I don't have to work at a, a certain time. Um, 
Except in the mornings, I have to kind of make sure and have some videos upload and stuff to the radio station. But uh, um, but I get, you know, I got to keep this stuff up. Well, I've just lost a section of our house. We cannot use our dining room table because Rob's hogging it all. So there's for relationships or whether you own stuff or whatever, trying to blame it on trying to live the American dream or being in an RV, uh, the same problems, if not new or different problems, are there either or. That's not a good excuse to just sell everything and hit the road. If you're having trouble with your relationship, it's not the RV and it's not the house that's the problem. It's the relationship. And, uh, you know, when you own a house, uh, you got some privileges you're just not going to have in an RV. Just remember, everywhere you put that RV, everything around that RV, you do not own. And nor do you have the right to make rules for it. The people that own it do. And I think a lot of people forget that. And also, um, the other problem is we got so many people abusing the places where the free camping is where we got so much garbage and disrespect for the land and then a lot of people who are living in vans and stuff are don't have uh, proper oh, sanitation so they're going all over the grounds and stuff like that and and uh, the pollution of an unsanitary conditions and a lot of this free camping has been pointed out over and over again and that privilege is going to go away because someone's got to come in and pay for it and, and clean it up and it's not the campers it's the government it's the cities it's the counties and so uh, either they're gonna nickel and dime you to death and charge you for all these places you're free camping because someone's got to pay for the labor to pick up after you now there's people out there that are doing the right thing but it seems to be more of them out there not doing the right thing and treating our public lands, free camping, terrible. And it's ruining it for us. And I wish there was a way that we could enforce that. Well, once again, guys, I want to take the time to say thank you for all the best wishes we've gotten from our listeners. And, uh, um, and yes, I am doing this show from my RV. I think I mentioned that before. Um, it's been a lifesaver. It's been so nice to have our RV and it does feel like our home because we did live in this for a while. But I gotta admit, I do miss, <laughs> I'm looking forward to going home again. I, I think the thing that bothers me the most is if you have a hobby or something like, for example, um, I got the podcasting and things like that and I do a lot of marketing and online stuff. Uh, it's kind of irritating to be in an RV and um, I told you that I described to you that my whole dining room table I'll never see again until I, uh, I get this equipment back to the house. Um, so, you know, you got to have to, if you have a hobby, some of them, some of your hobbies you won't be able to do anymore. Um, you have to put on the wayside or find a way to do them in a smaller scale. Or have an RV that can commit part of the space to taking care of uh, uh, of your hobby. And, and maybe you're into sewing or things like that. Uh, is a problem. And sorry about the background. This particular microphone I got picks up noise beyond just the voice. And so I got my computers sometimes making noises and cats and dogs and stuff. So not my favorite microphone we're using right now. Uh, but you make do. We make do with what we got and whatever. In some cases, people, it's their budgets and stuff. But I will look forward to getting my studio back <laughs> and having a little bit better microphones and stuff. So, And uh, the sound to be a better better quality for you. So I do apologize for that. I, do, I am aware that um, the sound quality is not what it's like in the other episodes. But we're making do. So anyway, so... In the RV, I, 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 I instantly feel the being confined when it comes to uh, taking care of my business and things. Um, 
The other thing is, you know, we started the poopy bag business. I have inventory stored at the house, and it's not just a little bit. <laughs> it's over 3,000 boxes of Ranger Rob poopy bags. Um, and what we do is we take commodities of that, and we regulate the inventory at Amazon. So we keep, oh, 40 to 60 on hand at Amazon at one time. And we, because if you keep too much inventory at uh, Amazon, they charge you for the space. And so it damages your profits. So we keep the large quantity um, uh, because it's a new business. If we got bigger, we, we have to go beyond our house. But we have a room just devoted to storing Ranger Rob poopy bags. We put uh, large one-ton shelving in, um, and they're just loaded with our products. And could never do something like that here in an RV. So the limitations you need to know about um, if you don't have, you know, obviously the scale of things we have, no big deal. But, uh, uh, boy, you sure notice it when you go from a house back to an RV, uh, how limited we are in space, you know, things for the cats and dogs. And, and uh, um, uh, I do miss some of the amenities. And uh, it's noted, but for every action, there's a reaction. So if you're going to downsize to an RV, uh, you need to make sure you're willing to give up the dishwasher or, or give up uh, uh, having your own full-scale washer and dryer and unlimited hot water and things like that. Or maybe you're into gardening. Uh, that's gone. Oh, gardening just doesn't make sense when you're an RVer. Uh, yeah, there's a plant or two you could take along with you. But uh, uh, you need to know that stuff. And that's what this show's for, this lifestyles. And, uh, oh, and the other thing I wanted to take the time is for those of you that are new, we get new listeners all the time. You can catch RV Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio, which is our full-time worldwide radio station. And we play episodes of RV Talk Radio along with other kind of, all kinds of great shows um, on Saturdays and Sundays at about, I think it's middle afternoon, like 3 or 4 o'clock. Uh, but there's a lot of other great shows on there, um, and uh, some of our other shows we do are on there too. But our shows come from all over the world, and so uh, please take the time and go to, and it's exactly how I say it is how it's the domain is, Good Talk Radio. And we also play music at certain times of the day, uh, which is classic rock, um, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> Before it all went amok. <laughs> so... Uh, um, but some of the shows we have, we have some awesome shows, and we have some great doctor shows and nutrition shows, outdoor shows. We have just fun, goofy shows. We have a really nice uh, spiritual Sunday early morning shows of uh, uh, if you uh, like to have something to enjoy your faith with. Um, we have uh, Praise the Lord Christian music in the morning on Sundays, and then we have... Uh, um, voice of the Lord, uh, the minister there, who does the sermons every um, week there, and he does a good job. Really nice guy, and uh, yeah, and Mike Myers. So yeah, feel free to uh, enjoy our Sunday show um, if you uh, need a little faith hour or two. So yeah, Good Talk Radio is on RV Talk Radio. Also, you can uh, if you're just like to listen to the podcast version of this, which you might be doing right now. Obviously, we're in all the normal uh, outlets for that, including um, uh, when you go to Facebook, you'll see we're always um, uh, promoting a Spreaker. Uh, not Speaker, but Spreaker. <laughs> and, uh, but we're, uh, if you've got a cell phone and you can pull up podcasts, we're, of course, in TuneIn and, and iTunes and all that good stuff. iHeartRadio, all that good stuff. Spotify, we're in there. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Um, so I think it covered it all as far as where you can find RV Talk Radio. And, uh, of course, we love messages from you. I'm real grateful to the really nice uh, note we got from uh, Frank. And uh, But we get lots of uh, folks that are always... Uh, the, the comments for Sherry's father have been just wonderful. And thank you so much, people. We do appreciate it. And we do note it. And um, sometimes we can't necessarily write back and say we saw it. But... You, uh, you, sh uh, you know, we have the YouTube version of that, too, so we get comments through there, too. So uh, 
uh, we either like it or would definitely take the time to say thank you for your comment and feedback. Um, and of course, if you uh, want to get after me about a subject I talked about, um, I'm open. I, I'm not looking for insults. I'm looking for debate. And so uh, feel free to uh, give us your comments. We uh, we prefer you to be professional about it if you got something to go against what we've said. Um, and that's okay. Um, being opposed, opposed, opposing what our view is is fine. It's okay. I'm old school. Um, insulting um, and attacking and using bad language, it shuts us down right away. We usually just delete that stuff and don't even respond to it. Um, but we get lots of people that um, that debate, you know, what we're how we feel about the Bob Wells or uh, some of this van stuff. And uh, but you've heard us say positive things too. Uh, yes, we we're quite aware of the benefits of some of that stuff for folks that are in fixed incomes and things like that. But we also see people abusing it and also messing things up for others. So we try to talk about all of them, and hopefully you are one of the ones that get the benefit of of RVing and doing it on a budget and um, not be one of the ones that are ruining for the majority. Majority people are great RVers. Majority of van people are great people. Um, but there's a 2 to 5% out there that are doing some stuff that are messing it up for all of us. Between city ordinances <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, and uh, parking in places they shouldn't and, and leaving garbage and and abusing the places that we get for free, um, gosh, guys, you gotta you gotta clean up your act because you're ruining it for us. And we, it's hard for us to catch you. And even if we caught you doing it, we don't really have the right to do anything other than try to contact a park ranger or something. But um, you gotta think about uh, cause and effect. What what you're doing that's is, is hurting others and is hurting yourself. And uh, hurting future RVers and future van dwellers and future nomads, um, negative actions like that are uh, are just not good. You, you need to change your ways. Pick up your garbage. Uh, if you take it in, you take it out. And, and uh, courtesy and and not partying and, and things like that. Gotta stop doing that, please. I'm asking you, please stop and make it nice for all of us. One of the things I wanted to make sure and mention is uh, I've been invited to in Sweet Travels. Um, they were just talking about in their latest video. Um, they're showing themselves uh, in snow uh, uh, over in Spokane and going to Yakima. Uh, that they're uh, Papa Drew, which you've heard me talk about him before. They're trying to coordinate a little get together at Quartzsite um, sometime in January, I believe. I don't think Sherry and I will be able to make it because uh, we've got a new member to our family, as you heard, and I don't know uh, how um, how we would be able to do that, um, which is makes us sad. But at the same time, we're uh, we want to take care of Sherry's mom, so we got to give up a few of our things that we do. Uh, we might find a way to go down, maybe even a day trip. Uh, it's not that far for us. Uh, I mean, it's it's a good drive, but we maybe at least come for the day and visit a few folks. So I uh, will try to make that commitment um, to at least for a day come over on a trip, uh, on a road trip, and come visit, but not bring our RV. And say hello to all the folks. Um, but Papa Drew would have more of uh, information, and uh, I do highly recommend you go to his Facebook group page called Papa Drew's RV travel pay group um, and get signed up. I mean, at least become part of the group. Uh, all the people we've met are very nice. They left us very nice comments. And uh, um, Sweet Travels is one of them. I made sure and subscribed to them and catch some of their shows. Um, and uh, they've been very kind to us, too. And uh, we'll try to support them with RV Talk Radio for announcements and things like that if they like and so uh, we are offering our services to them for coordinating their uh, get together and uh, as soon as I know more about dates and stuff like that and then get Papa Drew or Drew um, to give me an official announcement of the event I uh, will certainly uh, 
advertise it here on the show here. So, uh, and they've been great supporters of RV Talk Radio, so we really appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, there's a get together. So, a lot of like minded, really nice people. Um, and of course, a lot of people will be at courtside, but they want to kind of just do their own little um, meetup. And I think that would be fun. And uh, if anything, we can at least come down and visit for the day uh, due to our situation. But we, we will support. So, yeah, guys, contact me. Send us notes of what's going on with that. And uh, we'll uh, make it official and at least try to announce it on some of our shows prior to the actual event. So, yeah. The other thing I wanted to bring up, which is kind of near and dear to my heart, is picking up after your pets. And so I know you, I'm not going to this. I mean, this obviously I'm preaching about RV um, Ranger Rob poopy bags. But what's kind of funny is that we're up in central Oregon, which is a lot of redneck kind of people have property and stuff like that. And so we've gone to a few stores and places like that, which are car, you know, carrying our products, which I appreciate. But it's kind of funny. The mentality here is so different about picking up after your pets than, say, in the city. Uh, I, I don't know how many people I've met, and then sometimes I'll donate a box of uh, of uh, poopy bags to them because I know they have, like, two Labradors or something. And, and I don't know how many times I've heard comments like, oh, yeah, these are neat. Uh, we don't use poopy bags because we just let our dogs go anywhere they want. <laughs> and uh, I, I've heard that, oh, a lot uh, of people that live out in uh, more in, out away from the cities and stuff. Yet they you know, bring their pets to places that are public and communities. And um, they're probably some of the ones that have that mentality like, well, I'm not picking up after my dog. That's wrong. Um, and I'm saying, guys, times are changing. And you know, I don't care what age you are. I'm 58. Things have changed. I used to never have to pick up after our dogs. We didn't pick up after our dogs in those days. And now, you know, people are more aware of it. We're taking our pets to parks and things like that and trails and national parks. And people don't appreciate seeing dog crap all over. And it's not that hard to get in the habit of picking up at it. And the Ranger Rock poopy bags are made to be easy to carry, easy to use, easy to tie up and seal. And if you have to carry the bag with you for a while to have the handles, it makes it quite easy. Um... And so, I guess this is a big reminder. Is guys, times are changing, and there's more people using all these different places. Please, I beg of you, pick up after your pets. And if you want to make it easy, and if you want a good product to do it with, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy the Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're affordable, and they work well. And they're high quality, and they got the handles. The handles really make a big difference for turning the bag inside out and to tie them off and seal them. Um, and if you have to carry it on a trail or something, the handles make it that much easier. I, I mean it, because I mean that was one of my pet peeves, and 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 I I know you folks from the country are uh, you know into the freedom of pooping, I guess, but. Uh, you know, you're taking your pets to our parks. You're taking your pets on trips and road trips. And you're coming into the more populated areas. We need you to please pick up after your pets. And please make that easy with Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. We'd appreciate that. So that's enough preaching for now. But I will preach more. <laughs> because it is one of my pet peeves. I would like to take this moment once again to... Thank all those people that do caretaking. I am becoming a caretaker for a family member, and it's no simple decision. It's a lifestyle change. It's as big as an RV changing your life to full timing. To take care of someone is one of the greatest commitments that I've seen people do, taking care of their mother or father, um, and, and someday me and Sherry may need that from our kids. And 
I know a lot of people just take it for granted. Oh, your mother's, you take care of your mother at your house. Well, depending on the situation, some folks that get older, they're chugging along just great. Others are having uh, hip problems, medical problems, uh, and, uh, and Sherry's mothers definitely get some issues and uh, can't walk a whole lot and stuff. And we got to do uh, cooking and, and uh, you know, she even has some cats and we want to make sure she can keep her cats. Now we got to upkeep a few more animals and that's okay. Um, but it's not for everyone. Um, your whole life will change if you have to do caretaking. It's no different than bringing a child into your into the world. You're a couple that were able to do anything you wanted and could go out late that night and stuff and suddenly a child comes along and your whole life changes. Well, it's the same with caretaking. Some people have got it easy, others have got it hard. Some have a budget, some don't have a budget. Some have a lot of medical, some don't have a lot of medical. Um, they're all different, that's what I'm learning. And how many people get a thank you for that? I know I have listeners that have someone either taking care of uh, their parents or a special child or, uh, or some unique situation. Maybe folks coming uh, back from the Iraq war, um, someone that's been injured and are now in like a wheelchair or medical problems. Um, those people don't get enough thank you. Um, I don't deserve the thanks yet, although we're, uh, and stuff. But there's folks out there that I've met and I've made a, a effort to talk to them and to say, "How do you do this? How did you do that? How do you handle it? How do you get your private time? Um, how, uh, you know, uh, how do you get away? Do you not get away? Is it bad to think that you need time away from it? Um, how do you deal with it?" And it's hard. And uh, Sherry and I uh, knew this day would come. And it's now here. We're in it. We're doing it. And mixed emotions sometimes. Sometimes it's like, oh my, what did happen? Well, what are we going to do? And the next is, hey, I feel good that we're taking care of someone. They took care of us when we were younger. Now it's time for us to return the favor. Sometimes it's harder if it's you're not your own kin. Um, you know, it, this is in this case Sherry's mother. Well, what if it was my mother? Would I, you know, uh, does my wife support the fact that if I had to take care of my folks, my folks are gone. Um, and uh, anyway, I just think if you know someone that's doing caretaking, take the time after you've heard the show, give them a call and give them a good pat on the back. Uh, thank them. Tell them how much you admire them. Respect them. Because they are doing some wonderful things for other people. And not it's not all about them. In this show, I was talking about it's all about me. And the people think about all about me. And this is what the show was all about. It's not all about you. It's all about us. And supporting one another and being a community that includes uh, RVing and RV community lifestyles we uh, talk about the good and the bad and how to do things right how to keep some of our services and our privileges without them getting taken away and it's the same for caretaking people that have lost some of their abilities depend on other people like us to help them have fulfilled lives for things that they've lost their mobility their independence their pride being uh, humility humili humility <laughs> oh, my tug's getting tuckered out all that stuff is uh, it's hard on them too those that are receiving the care they have to be humble they have to depend on others and it's hard for them too. But the people that are doing it, they need to be commended. They need to be a pat on the back. Go buy them some flowers and just say, hey, thanks for being such a great person. Because it really is. And of course, there's all those caretakers out there that are just doing it for their careers. 
nurses, people working in assisted living, uh, EMP, <coughs> sorry, EMP pro folks. Um, <coughs> no, I'm not getting too choked up here. But there's some people that just help other people. It's not all about them. And that's amazing. We need more of that. And some of us are getting forced into it. I mean, Sherry and I, we're kind of living a life of, it's all about me. And you can only do that so long. Is that why you're RVing? Is that why you want to be a nomad? Because it's all about you? Uh, you can run from it, but it's going to catch up with you. And someday you're going to need help. And you better be glad that there's caretakers out there. So please, I know I'm dwelling on this. I'm repeating myself a little bit. If you know of a caretaker or you know someone who does caretaking, uh, either voluntarily or as a career, I get on the phone, call them up and say, you know what? Thank you for being such a great person. Thank you. So guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope this was a meaningful show to you. Um, please send us your comments, good, bad, or indifferent. Please be per per professional. And bear with my bad microphone here. <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> and uh, I need to get back out to go take care of our mother-in-law. And, uh, and help, uh, help out things there. And uh, we are bringing her home to Arizona. So we will be uh, back in Arizona uh, within 30 days, I would guess. And I'll be back to normal. I'm going to have to change my studio a little bit because we're opening up some rooms for her. And uh, that's okay. I can make that sacrifice. No problem. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting RV Talk Radio. Until next time, bye now. And by the way, go buy an RV and be safe. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.